Welcome to the Mad Max Cast, brought to you by Closeout Bats. Mad Max utilizes his baseball and softball equipment expertise to bring you the industry's only podcast. Get ready for a peek into the warehouse doors. Here's your host, Mad Max. Mad Max coming to you live from Closeout Bats, and today is May 5th, 2020. Uh, thanks to all that are out there listening today. Uh, hope everybody's still safe, healthy during this time as we kind of move towards a new normal. Uh, things will uh, will ultimately get better. Like I keep saying, we see that light. We see it um, realistically, you know, probably hopefully June, um, you know, but we're going to start seeing obviously May 15th was the date that was given to us, but we'll, uh, we'll know more as the days kind of progress here. So, uh, anyway, I have a great, great interview. Um, this one was actually done um, on Instagram Live. So it was the first one that was on Instagram Live and just recorded the conversation from Instagram Live. So we were able to go uh, do the video. And then also um, we uh, recorded it, obviously. So if you think the sound quality is a little bit iffy, I, I, I maxed it out as loud as it goes. Um, I listened back to it. I think our connection went out one time during it. But like these are the times um, that they call for us. Like, so, you know, Wi-Fi is not going to be spotty. Uh, connection is going to be always spotty as well. So, but honestly, from like a standpoint of um, going live and, and getting uh, what we both kind of wanted out of this interview, it was it was uh, it was awesome. So, my guest is Coach HP on Instagram. So uh, he's known for like kind of his loud intro. It's like uh, kind of very Mad Max s where he's like, "Yo, it's your coach." Um, and it's uh, it's it's just an awesome vibe you get from it. Very positive guy, upbeat guy. Um, so if you go to his Instagram, his Instagram is at Coach HP, uh, all one word, no underscore, no nothing. So he's a brand ambassador for the company Rollins. So we carry a lot of uh, Rollins baseball and software products. So Rollins was able to set it up. So shout out to Rollins, especially to Lindsay. Um, who we had on a previous episode. So Lindsay was on here. She is, uh, I mean, she is absolutely the best. I said it back then. I've said it on a couple episodes, so that seems to be the theme. But um, Rollins definitely set this whole thing up. So I want to give credit where credit's due. Thank, thanks to Rollins and uh, and thanks to Lindsay, who is, uh, you know, just uh, uh, first class all the way. So thanks to them. He is a brand ambassador, so he'll get into that, his uh, kind of, what he does for Rollins and what he does for other people as well. And this dude's got a lot cooler friends than I have. So if you're listening to this and you're one of my friends, um, I apologize. This dude, I mean, he hangs out with Gary V. He hangs out with A Rod. Uh, he hangs out with, uh, I think, even in one of the things he was like golfing with Michael Jordan in one of those. So that was like pretty wild to see. So this dude has way cooler friends than than I have. So, uh, but he does have a great positive message. Uh, he has a very interesting story. He talks about his upbringing, where it took him, why he wanted to get away, and uh, why he got back into baseball. You know, so he says he, you know, was uh, he grew up playing baseball, all that stuff. And uh, I won't give too much away. Goes out to Vegas, uh, gets a great job, but then decides to come back and do the whole coach thing. And then he talks about his partnership with Rollins, and uh, and also uh, I think he's a brand ambassador for another. Um, aspect of baseball slash softball so here it is without further ado here is coach hp uh better known as hashtag it's your coach yo here we go what's up big man yo it's your coach (laughs) what's going on dude nothing bro you want to just do it like this or you want me to uh i mean i could record it i could record this conversation we could do whatever you want we could do it like this and record it whatever uh, all right, so you want me to call you real quick, I guess, on the phone? Whatever's easier for you, you tell me. All right, I, uh, well, we could do it like this. This is fine, bro. Let's do it. All right, man. So, thanks for joining me, dude. How uh, how are you, first off? Are you, are you safe, healthy? I'm healthy, I'm safe. Max, where are you located? New Jersey. So you're in New Jersey. Nice, bro. What about you? Yeah, New Jersey, Miami. Okay. So have things started to kind of open back up or not really? Not yet, but I think it w- definitely we're not in as worse situation as you guys. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I I know really soon something something's going to happen. I keep saying May 15th in my head, May 15th in my head. Like, you know, all, when they said Mar- back in March, if they said 
all right, you're going to be locked down for three months. I would have been like, oh, I don't think I could do it. But all of a sudden we get to like April and they're like May 15th. You kind of see the light, not at the end of the tunnel, but at least you see a light. So that's, uh, that's what we're hoping for. I, uh, I gave, yes, uh, I gave a shout out to Rollins who kind of set this up. I think they're, uh, I don't know your involvement in Rollins. We'll, we'll get to that all kind of later on. First off, wh- I don't even know. I think I know your real name, but I don't want to, d- what's your real name? My real name is Hector Peñade. Okay. I'm and, from Cuba, so I'm Cuban. And you go by Coach HP, right? Coach HP, yeah, Coach HP. So how'd you get that, that, that name, Coach HP? There was one of the, when I was in Beverly Hills, and I was, uh, there was this kid, and he used to call me, first kid to ever call me, HP. Shout out to Stevie Dunn out there in Beverly Hills. First kid to ever call me HP. And it just stuck, and it just stuck, and I go, the minute I can use it, I'm going to use it, so I love using it. <laughs> Coach HP. So you grew up where? Where did you grow up? I grew up, I was born in Cuba, then we went to Spain for a little bit, then I moved to uh, to Miami. So I grew up in Miami, became the biggest failure in the history of Miami baseball by far, out here. Hmm. Lived in a car, moved to Los Angeles because the casting director discovered me. Lived in a car in Los Angeles, in the Hollywood Hills, for six months without knowing a single person. From there, baseball, ironically, what I'm the biggest victim of sports abuse, I think, out there because what happened with me and my dad. Mm. So I, I pretty much ran away from the baseball life and everything. But in going across the country, what saved me and what made a name for me out there was I became a celebrity baseball trainer. Before social media, before smartphone, before all that stuff. So I did that, not wanting to do anything with baseball. Mm. And then I did that for six years trying to act, failed as an actor. And then I moved to Las Vegas and I became very successful in Las Vegas. I ran a, a nightclub called Hyde and the Bellagio. And I lived at the Aria Hotel. And then in Las Vegas at the age of 31 is where I really became a man and learn how to deal with all my insecurities, what problems I had, even though, yes, I did have very unrealistic abuse through baseball because of my dad, mm. it's still my fault. Yeah. It's still, I can control certain things. Not as a very young kid, but as your teenagers and stuff, I had to own up to that. So that led to a four-year run in Las Vegas, which was awesome. No sleep. No sleep. <laughs> uh my goal was to work a year, positive momentum. Every day for a year, positive momentum took me to a year and a half. Mm. I couldn't stop, and that's what got me there. And then the voice inside me, some people say it's God, some people say it's the universe, started talking to me, Max, and said, is the legend of you going to die in a Las Vegas nightclub? So I met the love of my life, which is my wife, who I went to high school with, but I never spoke to her. Mm. But I saw her. And... I threw her best friend's bachelorette party in Las Vegas. I fell in love with her instantly, moved down here to Miami. Never wanted to come back to Miami because I love Los Angeles. I love Las Vegas. But I felt someone was calling me here. And then I said, I'm going to, everybody thought I was crazy for doing baseball. Like, what do you mean you're going to do baseball? You're going to go to being in Las Vegas, go do baseball in Miami. I'm going to do baseball, but I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to find a way to connect parents and kids and focus on what really matters and not, and not go through the same type of things that you went through growing up. Right. 1000%. And not only that, but to focus on that. The only two things you can control is effort and attitude. Mm. My, my dad did everything in the world to prepare me for everything. I'm prepared for everything. Coronavirus adversity, you name it, but he didn't prepare me to deal with him. Hmm. And what's happening is, is I noticed, and I didn't notice because I was so disconnected from baseball because I was just training little kids. And then Vegas, I didn't do anything with baseball. When I came back to the baseball world, I noticed how everything changed and how everybody wanted their kid to be this person. And if it wasn't this athlete or this person, it was no good. Mm. And then there was no in between. I noticed that the, I, had a, I had a big upscale clientele. Those people were babying their kids, being very soft. Mm. The Cubans and the middle-class people and the blue-collar people were abusing their kids like 
So there was no in between. Mm. So it wasn't fun. It wasn't a learning thing. So I just started that. I flipped the camera around about two years. And I said, I didn't come out, hey, what's up? It's your coach. It didn't come like that, but it took me a while to get to that. But I started learning. I started understanding social. I didn't know how to edit. People promised me stuff to teach me to edit. Nobody helped me. So mm. I had to take my happy, positive self to the Apple store. And I sat there two months, two times, two hours a day. And I learned how to edit on iMovie. Ugh. And that's how I started. And I approached this not like a baseball guy, but I approached this almost as a YouTuber vibe mm. with the idea of to help everybody with my story. Yeah. Because I'm 41 years old. And as you could imagine, it is the most uncool, almost most douchey, narcissistic thing possible to walk around with a camera in Miami, in Miami Little Leagues all over town. <laughs> but no, nobody had done that. So I got hated on by everybody. Yeah. But my idea of helping one dad, mm. of helping one kid with my story, and then that led to the speaking stuff, and the speaking stuff led to the endorsement and then all of the rest and everything that's coming. But it all started with Max with the most important thing to me was to help one person, mm. whether it's a social media person or it's a dad or it's a kid that's 18 years old that is like, man, you know what? I think I want to be a store, a baseball store owner versus a baseball player. Mm. That's 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 a great point. So, like, what it, would you say is your sweet spot for age, like the kids that you train and help out? Well, it was it was crazy because the I made my niche here really young, mm. like with almost a little t ball coach pitch, and then. When I started becoming popular, then it became a lot of big leaders' kids that I started to train. And then high school guys, and then college guys, and then pro guys. But what I noticed, Max, with the big leaders was, I I think in Miami, I probably work with the most big, big leaders' kids. And there isn't one pro guy, and we're talking about like Hall of Famers, guys that are multimillionaires, that has ever said, while well, I'm working with this kid, a word. Mm. to his kid and then you get these lawyers bankers yes yeah that just don't want to shut up <laughs> and then i had to tell them because i go listen this is this is what's important to me mm. the experience between you and your kid so if you're not going to be quiet then we're not going to work together anymore mm. that's 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 so true i hear we see that uh with our kind of clientele as well like you know, people coming in uh, for the product, like a guy that, you know, played college ball or even a guy that is a pro baseball player, um, you know, they come in and they're like, kind of like, you just tell me, I don't know anything about the gear. I don't know anything about the glove, the bat, all that stuff. You know, whatever you say is good. And then you have somebody else that maybe, you know, they know a lot about something else and they kind of go, oh, you know, we should be using this. It's like, well, this is what we do. You know what I mean? So kind of that uh, Trying to be humble is definitely the hardest thing. Um, Max, they're not teaching. They're not teaching. And especially, listen, especially in the Latin community, bro. Mm. We are not educating dudes that have testosterone, that have machismo, to be humble. And say, listen, Max, I played a little bit, man, but can you help me out? Can you guide me? Even if I disagree. But yeah. it's that that thing that, that it, it's like I have to prove everybody that I'm right. Mm. And that's, I think people are failing big time because of that. Mm -hmm. Was that a tough move coming back to Miami? Were you like, kind of like, uh, you know, cause you got, I mean, did you kind of get out of Miami pretty quickly? And then you went to Las Vegas, you tried to go do the California. I was gone, I was gone in Miami for 10 years. Mm. Living it, the best thing I ever did. J-Lo discovered me on, a, on, a, on South Beach. I was modeling with Wilhelmina and then. I, to go to Los Angeles changed the course of my whole life. And I'll tell you why. How, how old are you, Max? I am 28. It's your baby. So at your age, <laughs> I was in Los Angeles. Majority guys that I know here in Miami, at that time already, they're already married with kids. Mm. And I was real lucky to get married at 37. Mm. Real lucky to live life. Yes. Real lucky to travel. I'm in the nightclub business. I was able to be in Europe for six months out of the year, see culture, live. So right now there isn't any element of my life that I've gone and gone, that I look at and go, man, I wish I would have done that. Mm. On the contrary, 
Now it's about giving because I've lived. And I see a lot of guys that at 28, they, they, they fence themselves in without really having to. So to me, the transition from the Vegas lifestyle, yes, because Vegas, it's a, it's a town of hookups. It's a town everybody knows you, so you're like a celebrity in the town. But I felt, and like I feel it right now, the need to help people and to give my opinion to a person is the biggest thing that has guided me and has opened so many doors. And like I said, you look to impress nobody, Max. Mm. I'm a blue-collar guy. I wanted to be a private school guy, elite guy my whole life because I came from nothing. That was my insecurity. But when I flipped it and I decided to help everybody, it changed my whole life. And then my success just keeps going up and up and up. Mm. So so you would say, moving back to Miami from Las Vegas, I mean, how long could somebody live that Las Vegas lifestyle? I mean, do you know people that are still out there from back when you were there? Yes, and I could because I got lucky. I was one of the few guys that I don't drink, I don't drugs. I uh, I didn't gamble a little bit till the end, so Las Vegas for me was perfect. But not a married uh, man's world, right? Like, not a married, <laughs> no, some married guys do it, but it takes, your wife has to be in the industry, mm. they really have to understand it. I felt at the end, the CEO of MGM, who just retired, right? who just stepped down right now, Harvard guy, he brought me into the casino business. And when I came to Miami, originally I disguised myself to the casino business, but then I got to the other things. And for me, what I noticed was that coming to Miami was so easy because I focused on the message, not how I follow anything. And that just took me over. Mm. So then you come back, you come back, which we got to And then who like do you start you start filming yourself or you said you went to the Apple store and you start like how did like you, I know you said the coach HP he was born but like when did you get obviously that kind of like I'm going to start doing these videos start filming kids and stuff like that and go like this coach HP persona I started watching the YouTubers and I said okay what am I what am I doing mm. what's how how can I reach more people and then I figured out the camera thing I, I grabbed a, a good camera, not the most expensive one, not a two, but a good camera because a lot of people get stuck on equipment, which is ridiculous. <laughs> and I felt that my, my story and my message was so strong that it would transcend. And I had a lot of patience. So I never was ashamed that if I'm speaking to Mercedes Benz on Tuesday and Thursday, I'm washing cars for money. That anybody would go, oh, look at this guy. He's a fraud. Mm. Is that? I'm not a scared of anything because the truth, to me, it was been my biggest friend, biggest ally and everything. So that documenting started that. When I would speak, I started, I asked my little cousin. I would ask people. I got, no one has been, no one has been let down more by editors than me. Mm. I hired people. They've left on me in the middle of the job. They've done this and that. So I forced myself to do everything. And that's how I started. Step by step. One following at a time. And then God put everybody in front of me. And it's crazy that me helping and not knowing who I helped. And one of my most famous stories is UM reaches out to me, University of Miami. Mm. I'm doing their baseball camp. A coach sees my content from Oregon State. He reaches out to me. This two years ago. Reaches out to me to go speak to Oregon State. i never spoken to anybody before in the baseball world. I speak to Oregon State, just like I'm talking to you now about my failures, all these things. They were the national champs. I flew myself out there, paid for everything. 23 hours of tra- of, of travel. I just had a two-week-year-old baby. Mm. And I told my wife, I got to do this. Went out there. And as I'm speaking, I go, any questions? This one kid came up to me, raised his hand and goes, coach, how do you do a failure? How do you do a mindset? I answered it. I had no idea who the kid was. Build an instant connection. Take the team photo. Dude's right next to me. The guy sends me a DM after. Very special. The coach calls me. He goes, hey, do you know that kid was that was asking us questions? I have no idea. He goes, that's Ali Rushman the projected number one overall pick in the 2019 draft. Mm. 
So now look at that connection. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what I what I try to tell anybody that's on this chat, any kid that sees this or any adult, that the only thing that you can't have is excuses. Because mm. if I would have stayed home yeah. and said, wait a minute, they're not paying for me to go out there. Yeah. They're not doing this. They're not doing that. Yeah. Guess what? Nothing happens. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, no. Yeah. So that word, that word, uh, that word, yes, definitely becomes pretty important. Don't say no so much, right? Dude, I'm about to change my name to Yes Peña because all <laughs> I do is say Coach yes. yes, Coach Yes, always. And then listen, have people taken advantage of me? A hundred percent. Have I, a famous saying that I have is when I started, my friends lied to me in my face. Mm. Then strangers lied to me in my face. Now because my profile's got a little higher, I have famous people. Yeah. People that me and you know promise me things and lie to me in my face. But I can't control that. Mm. Only thing I control, my effort, my attitude, and I'm looking for that one person. And that one person, you never know who's going to be, changes your life like that, bro. Mm. That is, that's a great point. So what's your involvement with Rollins? or What do you do with Rollins? So this is what happened with Rollins. One of my most successful, at the time, my most successful YouTube video was, I started getting on YouTube, and there was... As I trained 6U, 7U, 8U kids, there was this bat. This is two years ago. Mm. Two and a half years ago. Called the Rawlings Prodigy. Yes, yeah. This orange bat that I think that bat made me a legend here because it just, kids would destroy the ball with it. <laughs> and, it and down here, man, we played U Triple S A. Yes, so yeah. So it has, it has the big barrel. Yeah. And the noise it made, and it was this beautiful orange color. And it was the first bat that came with a warning. That said, this bat can cause death to players, umpires, spectator, coaches. I was bats off, awesome. and it was it was relatively inexpensive. It was like ninety nine bucks, yeah, eighty nine yeah, yeah. bucks. You got it. So, dude, everybody that I worked with, I just said, use that bat, use that bat, use the bat. Bing, bing, bing. You hear the noise, and everybody started doing good. So, you know what? I'm gonna do a bat review on this bat. I did it. Great views, great engagement, et cetera, et cetera. I go to the ABCA. Yes. Two years ago. Nobody knew who I was. I went to the ABCA because a guy who's the best, I helped. Somebody brought me out to speak. I made a connection with this guy. I worked with his kid for free. After I was done speaking, at like 11 o'clock at night on a Friday, mm. they didn't charge the guy $1. Everybody wants to charge now. And I understand people have to make a living, but... Oh, we're locked in for coronavirus. Coach HP is going to do a, I'm going to do an hourly session and I'm going to charge everybody five bucks. No, no, no. no. That's what everybody does. And I'm watching it and I'm like, they're going to fail. This person's going to fail mm. long because it's, it's very short term. Yeah. Nothing long term. So I helped and I helped and I'm at the ABCA and, and I, and I had contacts with everything except for all of this. Mm. And I go, I'm going to talk to people. And everybody spoke to the, you know, the smaller companies, whatever. I spoke to the biggest ones. And when I got to Rawlings, I met uh, Mike, who's their CMO. Yes, yeah. Who's the best, Mike Thompson. Yes. And I looked at him, and I have this all documented because I have a guy recording me. And I go, Mike, I'm going to tell you something. This is who I am. You had a back called the Rawlings Prodigy. That in Miami, I'm sure people used to accuse me, Max, of having steak in Rawlings. Because <laughs> that's how much I pushed this back. Yeah. Like I would train a kid with the, with the prodigy. The new kid would be with a prodigy. The other kid would be leaving with a prodigy. <laughs> and then they would line them all up in the dugout. And it would just be like, it looked like cones, all these bats. That's and so I told funny. them this. And I go, what's missing in baseball, what's missing in social, yeah. what's missing in all this is passion, man. Mm. Somebody that believes in something first and then worries about money second. Mm. So I had this talk with him. He put me in contact with Lindsay, which put us together. The best. And She's the, the best. best. Everybody in Rollins is the best. And she, then it became a weight gain, mm. which is the patience stuff, you know? You can imagine, I'm here in Miami. I'm like, dude, you know how awesome it'd be to be affiliated with Rollins? Yeah. And we just waited, and it took six months to happen. But when it happened, I became the first influencer to sign with Rollins. Okay. And what I promised them was, I would listen, 
I'm going to be honest. That's the only thing I ask of you. If there's something I don't believe in, don't force me to, to say it's this and that because mm. my audience is... You got to understand, I get about 1,000 to 500 DMs a week. Yeah. Anything from coach that I repeat the eighth grade to coach my kid just Googled how to commit suicide. What should I do? Uh. So I have very people that, that my DMs are a lot of a lot of private things that people confess to me. So I do not want to be lying to sell products. I remember one of my first conversations with Rawlings was, I do not want to get paid on the amount of products I sell. Mm. I don't want there to be, oh, put a coach HP code so I could get five. No, I don't want that. No. Because I wanted the authenticity and I wanted that long-term relationship. So started with that. Started with, with the product, I mean, selling the product, uh, but the selling of it was in all honesty of, of bats that I saw and I tested with my people. Mm. That's that. That makes sense now. Now I've, I I see the connection. Do you have any other deals with anybody else, or is Rawlings you're an influencer for Rawlings only? Rawlings and then a New Balance. New Balance. Okay. So baseball, obviously tying into baseball. You you want to keep it baseball. You're not going to be like no. somebody else, right? This is this is what I think. I see some people that they almost look like, you know, Ricky Bobby? Yeah. From, uh, <laughs> with the, the race, because they have a thousand things. <laughs> I, I uh, to me, I I believe in if, and, I, and I, ironically, I learned this from A-Rod. When, uh, Miami guy. When, Miami guy, when he started, Alex, for advice on real estate, went to the top guy here, had the luxury to go to Warren Buffett, started that. Mm. Then he teamed up with Mercedes Benz. Then he teamed up with the Yankees. Mm. Once he had control, the best of the of, of the best of what they could find. So with me, my my opinion, Rawlings, the the New Balance thing I liked a lot because I liked where they were going mm. at the time. New Balance wasn't where they're at now. Where now they're like. Yeah, super Stop. cool shoes, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they have a lot of good stuff. Baseball is switched. Baseball is their number one thing now. So, so those are the two. But I can't tell Max, you, anybody else, man, the patience. Yeah, the patience. So, because you like, you know, you probably right away six months. You you want to like you meet Rollins at the ABCA. You're like ready the next day. Like, yeah, I want to start doing this. But like, like you just said, for anybody listening, it takes patience. It took like six months to a year till you actually start with like endorsing some of their products and stuff like that. Because it takes time because Rawlings had never done this before. Yeah. And they probably honestly don't trust, trust somebody, you know, they, they've never done something like that either. So it's, it's new so for legal, everybody. Legal's like, listen, we, we got to do things a certain way. How is this thing going to happen? So, when you're trend setting things, yeah, you gotta be patient. You gotta be confident in yourself. You gotta trust, man. Uh, I'm, everything I do is about the journey of it. Hmm. That's that's, that's crazy. What do we miss as athletes? The locker room. Yeah. The boys. That journey. Yeah. We don't miss. Oh man, I missed my trophy. Look at the trophy I got. Man, I missed my stats. Yeah. That's what I try to share with people. That's that's awesome. So what are you doing? What what are you telling people now that are like struggling with this time that are like, man, my life is so different right now from what it was. It's like, you know, what would you tell somebody right now? Depends what your goals are, mm. whatever it is. So an example, because of what we're doing now, because of social, because of this, this is the time to, uh, you gotta understand, this coronavirus for me personally came in I had probably the three biggest biggest meetings that were going to change my life like this all canceled uh. because of what's going on and they were all based through New York so uh. and New York's the you guys yeah. is, a, is, a, is, is the hardest place hit so I could either complain about it yeah I could say oh my god I could get sloppy about it yeah or I could just keep going and I just keep going and what I tell people is if things enter your head, whatever it is, you know what? Man, I want to go work for the Yankees. Now is the time to see how you can bring value to your dream. Mm. Mm. I don't see people bringing or talking about bringing value to what they want to join, what they want to do. Want to have a channel? 
You want to have a, an Instagram account that does this, this, and that? Right now is the time to put 10 videos out daily. Mm. Don't worry about following. Don't worry about engagement, whatever. Somebody sends you something, you respond back. Somebody criticizes you. You say, thank you for your opinion, and you leave it alone. That's how you do. That's what I encourage anybody to do right now. Because we're about to get out of this. Yeah. They're already, there's already opening Tennessee, Georgia, eventually. And then, okay, are you going to be a guy that's already running downhill? Or are you still going to be uphill to then go over? Yeah, that's that, that's a great point. So, you know, what is uh, what are the plans for, for Coach HP this summer? If everything's kind of goes back to a little bit more normalcy, what is, what is Coach HP going to be doing? I mean, is he going to be still training people or kind of doing it all, motivational stuff? You, you do motivational speaking, right? So, yeah, so my, my number one thing is the speaking. Yeah. Speaking to, and I, and I got a very fortunate because I've spoken to, look at this portfolio yeah. of range that I've spoken to. I've spoken to the Ultimate Gamer, yeah. which is the Fortnite tournament. I've spoken at ESPN, at Disney, Oregon State, the I Am Baseball, literally, yeah. Columbus High School, which is the number one high school here in Miami. Uh, I had Mercedes-Benz before I had Chick-fil-A coming up. Um, all over the country. Now, it's get back at, to that. Yeah. I have a... I have a strong feeling that I'm going to do something with Barstool. Okay, that's cool. So I have that coming up. Is that one of the meetings that was in New York? I, I had a feeling that was going to be one of the good ones. And then my boy who who is crushing it, I don't know if you follow Gary Vee. He is crushing it. That is, I, I've, I've known him for quite a while. He's, he's a New Jersey guy, so we are uh, we kind of have a, a little bit of a similarity, so kind of in that New Jersey sense too. So... so You hear, me there? you hear me there? I got you back. Yeah, yeah. I didn't hear you. All right. The the Rays, he was going to talk to the Rays because somebody, the, the Cy Young Award winner had reached out. And I was going to see him in Tampa. Mm. We're going to have dinner and stuff. That got canceled. So I'm going to, we're definitely doing something with him together. I'm doing, I got him a Rawlings glove. Yeah. We're going to do baseball content together, me and Gary. Um, We... We had canceled through Rawlings. I was going to do Omaha. Yeah. Mm. That got canceled. Yeah. We're, we're going to do some perfect game stuff for sure. Speaking, more creating stuff. Because you, in all honesty, you don't know. I never. I had no idea that Oregon State was going to come. Yeah. I had no idea that Gary would come. Yeah. Barstool would come. Next Monday, I'm sitting down with, a, I'm going to interview the CEO of Barstool. Nice, bro. Nice. Who's a, who's a great person who I have contacts because of Alex. He's on the show with her. But I didn't use that. I went straight to the source and I said, listen, this is the value that I can bring. And, I, and, and dude, even for 28-year-olds, yeah, value. What are you bringing to the table? That's, that's true. I feel honored now that I got you on here, bro. I feel like big time. Like, uh... No, dude. We're, 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 we're... Listen, there's no... Nobody's gotten more big timed by people than me. Mm, so I would, if yeah, I, if you go to your Instagram, I'm blown away, dude. It's like I saw the Gary V thing. I'm like, wow, this guy is yeah. And it and it takes a while. And when I sat there with, so I covered the Gold Glove Awards. Yes, yeah. With Rawlings, and we I sat with everybody from Johnny Bench. Ozzie Where la Smith. last year you you did it. Last year in New York. Oh, uh, dude, so, I would have been I would have been there, but my wife gave birth the night the night before. So, <laughs> so so there and and I I grabbed everybody. Tell me about your failures. Tell me about what you know now. Yeah. And every kid wants to be Lindor, Arenado, Cody Bellinger, everybody. Same thing, man. Have fun. Yeah. Don't be so hard on yourself when you fail. Have fun. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. Those things are the ultimate road to happiness. Now, would Not you? 
Go for it. I was going to say, when do you think, I know, when did you find that out, that that was the, the, those two things? The, you know, don't compare and. At 31 when I got to Vegas. Okay, so that was, because I know we talked about that, that was the life-changing moment, 31. At 31, so if you look at it still, you're 28. Yeah. So you still, right now, can you're you're beating me. Because (laughs) I didn't learn this, and then I became, I had a big, big, big name in Las Vegas, but the more humbler I became, and the more people would lie to me, deceive me, hey, because the most competitive business in the world is the nightclub business. Hmm. Because, especially in Las Vegas, because if, if you and your four boys want to come party in Vegas, there's a million options. Yeah. And when we agree on a table, because that's how nightclub people get paid, we don't sign a contract. So you could sell me out last minute, go to excess, and my staying there with an empty table and nothing. Mm. So I learned to really understand that people, I can tell you anything, people only care about one person selves right me and you take a group picture yeah the first person you're gonna look at is man how did i come out in that picture <laughs> how did I? so i learned to eliminate me yeah now the only thing the only people that matter in that sense is my wife and my kid mm. after that after that is giving to everybody so everybody that's listening right now yeah coach hp he said a lot um, check him out on Instagram. What's your Instagram handle? So anybody listening, everything is at Coach HP. You DM me, I got you. We'll answer back. I answer Rawlings' question. I'm lucky. Look, Max, I'm lucky. I have Kyle and I have Ryan that help me with any questions. So yeah. I'm not like some product genius here yeah. that I sit here and go, oh, you know. No, I feel it. I have my opinion, but to give real answers, I have. I go to the source and. I, as I tell Rawlings, that's been huge because go and call Wilson and yeah. say, hey, can I, I want to talk about the Marini. Nobody's going to respond to you. Yeah, yeah. But I'm giving people instant info. Yeah, that's true. Well, if you ever need help with any questions or anything like that, uh, give me give me a call or whatever. And uh, I, I hope to, to meet you one day in New York. If you're in the area, New York, New Jersey area, give me a call, all right? 1,000%, dude. I'm there all the time. I have my boy, shout out to... Lou Geno, he's out there in uh, their US Elite. So I go see him. So I'm going to be in Jersey soon. When I'm in Jersey, I'll hit you up. Yeah, bro. Sa- sounds good. Good talking to you, all right? All right, man. All right, guys. Take it easy. Yeah, stay safe. Bye. Healthy, man. <laughs> okay, bye. So uh, that was uh, Coach HP. Hashtag it's your coach. Uh, great message by him. I love listening to him. Could probably listen to him for an hour. But, uh, you know, we got to get get on with our day, but uh, he w- he was great, great attitude. I wish I listened to him in the beginning of uh, if the, in the quarantine. It would have been a little bit easier, uh, be- just because of his attitude. He has the right mindset and uh, just like kind of just very positive. And that's kind of what we're trying to go for here. So, you know, just trying to get people positive on here, positive vibes only, only good vibes. I do not want to obviously give those negative vibes out and. Uh, you know, he, he was great. So I hope everybody kind of enjoyed that uh, that interview with uh, Coach HP. Uh, like I said to him, and I think uh, even when we were done with the interview, I even just shot him a quick text that, like, you know, you got a friend here in New Jersey. So next time you're here, I definitely want to meet up with you, meet you up in, in person and, uh, you know, do something else down the road. So really appreciate everybody that listened. Uh, please continue to stay safe and healthy. And uh, we will see you uh, when, obviously, we are allowed to come in contact and remember to shop smart and save your bucks at close out bats. And if you like the podcast, uh, please rate review and subscribe. And uh, five stars is better than one star. I've seen that sometimes on reviews where sometimes people write, give a one star review, but then they give like a fantastic review and it's like, well, that doesn't really kind of make sense. Five star is the best. One star is the worst. So go with the five star. If you're kind of in between the one and the five, go with the five. So appreciate that. And uh, we will meet again next week.